How you doing folks? We're here with James Gagan in Tyrrell's Pass in Westmead, a contractor and an ex beef farmer. James, thanks for having us down. No worries, more than welcome. Yeah, we, we had a good chat there off camera. Yeah. You're uh, an ex beef farmer. Well, sure. Uh, we would have been big beef farmers over the years, but it's just got to the stage where, where the returns weren't in it. There was a lot of work all winter, a lot of feed, big meal bills, and it wasn't just making money. So. When something's not making money, you, you, you cut back on it. Yeah. As simple as that, because it's taking up so much time, and time that you could be out of contract work where you will be making money. So, You're an agri-contractor as well. You're doing wagon silage. Work. Yeah, we run uh, three pound your wagons, and uh, with the commands were there on the pit, we run all Baltra tractors. So, yeah, we do a good bit of silage. So it's good. It's, it's a good long season. I had lucky enough. We have a good spread of work, so it's a great help. Yeah. You could have a short season this year by the looks of things. I don't know, I should have been making sales in October this year because there's not a bit of sales left in the pit anywhere in the country, so it's great. That's if it dries these, up. It's great if all these pits empty out. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Has to dry up first. Yeah, well, hopefully it has to dry up because we'll be in trouble otherwise now. There is a big problem at the minute there. There's very little fertilizer gone out yet, which means there's going to be very little early silage. That yeah. is an issue, but sure, what can we do about it? The weather's the weather. Yeah, yeah. You know. And are you at anything else other than the... The yeah, I'm sure. Like, part of the sales there, like, we do a lot of receding and we do a lot of land reclamation. We have a 15 ton digger there, so we do a lot of land reclamation and land drainage, and uh, then we do all the receding and then we do the sorry. So, uh, I've would, seen there coming in, you have a shed out the front, there's uh, what I would call compost or peat moss. Yeah, peat moss. We do a big business in peat moss where we bag ton bags and then we deliver loads for cattle bedding. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a good business, it creates good winter work. Uh, like, there's a couple of lads here full time all winter along with myself, so. We need work like that to keep men employed for the winter because this thing of thinking you're going to rock up in, in end of May with a heap of lads to put silage, if you don't have work for them for the winter, well, you're, you're not going to have them for the summer. So No, no, no. And that's it. That's so it's, it's huge help, yeah. Cause that's, that's one thing some contractors probably fall down on is where they don't have winter work. And so I've set up winter work here. We do fencing as well. We supply fencing and we, uh, we fence for hire. Uh, so between the fencing and the plant hire work, uh, there's all something going on. Like at the minute now, the, the diggers that have been on a farm for the last week doing farm roadways through a farm. And he's gone on now to uh, clean drains on another farm there today. And uh, I think we're going to draw Pete there today as well. Um, what else is on today? Uh, yeah, that's about it for today, I suppose. We're, yeah, we're drawing Pete and uh, we're digging. And we're moving a few load of slurry there in the yard as well. So These are always busy and kept going. There's always something to do around here, yeah. Um, we done a video with Christopher Duffy there last week and he touched on the morale of farmers. Have you, what's your thoughts on the, the morale within the farming community there at the minute? Uh, to be honest, at the minute, I, I've never seen it as low. Um, between the weather depression and there seems to be just an awful scarcity of money. Um, money's just not there. The dairyman... Like he got a price cut there last year, which he wasn't expecting. I think that was what really caught out a lot of them, where they had overspent probably the year before. And then when the, when the bad price came down last year, it, it caught a lot of them off guard, I think. Um, and then the, the winter gone by, a lot of them didn't milk on cows. So from what I see there now, the, milk, the amount of milk going into the dairy, dairies is way down. So money mm. in the economy is, is missing. And it's being missed. I suppose, I think the way I see it is, it's only in the last month really, I think it has really run out because a lot of dairymen had, would have had a good, uh, probably had a surplus from the year before. So last year wasn't an issue, but in the last few months there, and no big bill check in this year yet. Like, it's just impossible to get money out of dairymen at the minute. Like, I'm still owed for a good bit of last year's silage, and the men just don't, don't have the money. It's as simple as that. I was always under the impression it was the dairy men that was doing the best out of farming rather than the tillage man or the, the beef aware, man. But like they, they have done huge capital expense, expansion the last few years uh, and now it has, you can nearly say it has backfired on them. Um, who was pushing the expansion or who was... Well, if you're looking, go back 10 years, go back to Andy Kenny with his great food harvest 2020 plan, uh, expand, expand, expand and look, at, there's no doubt dairy is the most profitable sector but... If you're making a million and or two million, it's hard to add up. Doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. No mathematician, but it doesn't sound right. No, that's the Definitely problem. Definitely not, no. And would you be worried about farming? Would you be worried about a lad's going to come out of it this year? Um, I would be worried. There is definitely a lot of farmers going to retire this year. There's an awful lot of farmers in their sort of, say, late 50s, 60s, even 70s. 
who have worked on and worked on and I think they're they're mentally wrecked now. Um, they know they're flogging a dead horse. Well, they are, and and like an awful lot of farmers kept always kept the farm going because they had a son coming home to farm, or whatever. And now the son has decided I'm not coming home. That's that's actually probably the, the biggest issue I see in farming at the minute is there is absolutely nobody taking over farms. There is, and I, I I've said this to, to plenty of government officials and government TDs who was going to farm next, and like. Charlie McGonlog will tell you about all oh, the bright future in farming. But Charlie's not living in the real world because I see no bright future. It's just, the, like, there's just an easier living to be made in, in every other sector. And farming is just hardship. And you go back years when we were young and farming was always fun and, and the neighbours would all come in and they'd all chat to one another and come in there and drink tea in the kitchen and the farmers would be under no pressure. That's all over and gone now. And the, Why? Fun, is, the fun is gone out of farming. The red tape, the department inspections, uh, inspections on inspections, it's all just, like, if a farmer does any little thing wrong at all, bang. And every other sector can do what they like and not a word about it. Like, it doesn't make sense. I was talking to somebody the other day, and we're talking about all these migrants in the country, and they haven't a clue where any of the migrants are, but they know where every calf in Ireland is. Like, that doesn't add up. Yeah. Like, you can put a calf's tag number into a computer, it'll tell you what farm it's on. I can nearly tell you what field it's in, but there's murderers from around the world running around Ireland and no one knows where they are. Like, there's something wrong there at government level when that's happening. And like, there's coming down, they're so perfect with farming and making farmers be so perfect that they're putting farmers out of business because farmers just don't take this shit anymore. It's just, it's just too much hassle. Well, there's financial stress there and there's also the worry, like a farmer, he's an inspection the next morning and he's in thinking, Jesus, is this right? Is that right? Yeah. That has to take its toll. Well, I heard of a case down in down south where uh, a lady farmer uh, got an inspection and got a massive fine, which was totally wrong. And it eventually was reversed. But she did make a suicide attempt in the meantime. And she was found in time and she was saved. And... The reversal was done on the penalty. But like whatever men did that to that woman, they, they, you could nearly say the blood in her hands. Definitely. You know. Definitely. Um, like and they, they nearly take joy in 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 doing this in doing this thing to farmers. Like it's is it a power trip? Well, it is a a power trip. You could say uh, with some of them. But what they're saying is it's EU policy. And I have a supervisor over me from Europe who come over, can out of me, and if I don't do my job right, I'm in trouble. So they're saying, don't blame us, blame Europe. But like, what is Europe anymore? Like, I don't know, sure. We're going back to the early Hitler days now with, with, with Europe, with, with the laws coming in, because farmers really can't see if they do anything right. We're really being blamed. We're blamed for all the emissions totally in the wrong again. Uh, we're blamed for climate change. We're blamed for polluting everything. Like, I will just talk about pollution for a second. There's, the derogation went from 250 down to 220 in dairy farming, based on poor water quality. But the water quality in the highest dairy areas of the country is now proved to be crystal clear. So it's not the dairy cow that's doing the problem. Like the water quality in the rivers in Leitrim is not up to standard, according to the EPA. There's no dairy cows in Leitrim. So it's not the dairy that's doing, doing the harm. Is it farmers that's doing the harm? It's not the farmers. It's every sewer street and plant in every town. And it's a street hit. But sure, it's street hit to take out the solids. And where's the rest go? Sure, all the rest. Where's all the washing machine water, all the nature's go? Straight into the river. Look at any river flowing out of any town that's blowing, growing black green flaggers five foot high. Full of nature. All from the towns. But the EPA don't test the water there. The EPA tests the water on the, on the north side of the town, the high side. And where the water, before the water grows in the town. Come out and, oh yeah, the town is clear. But sure, it's all false figures. Like it's it's what's going on with the EPA with water testing. Um, like the derogation was lost by an EPA report that was sent to Europe. It wasn't. Uh, it was an EPA report based on false testing. The way the way the testing was done, because the testing wasn't done right. And we know that. We actually have facts and figures on that. And but of course, there's the derogation gone. There's a the cut to food production, and the 220 derogation is in big danger of going. If that goes, dairy farming is almost over in this country. But so they can't. What, what, what are we going to do if the, if, like, the way you're talking there, they're trying to get rid of the farmers? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's a European policy. And I, I, I firmly believe 
it's a European policy to slash food, food production. Like every farm scheme that comes out now, new acre schemes, all these schemes, all the tiller schemes, you know, where you have to keep out an extra few metres from the hedge. If you keep out a few metres from the hedge, that's the first round of the field on with the combine. That's the best round of the field, it's the biggest one. You know, go down and like, I'm after fencing off, I think it's nearly 10 acres of land here for the acre scheme. Now it was poor enough land, it wasn't that productive, but it's still graze a few cattle. We won't graze them anymore, I'm not allowed. So that's a cut to food production. Every scheme is a cut to food production. Like if you were uh, organizing food for, uh, say you ran the world and you were organizing food for people in the world, well, if you knew 800 million went to bed hungry last night, and if you knew 31,000 died of the hungry yesterday, and another 31,000 died today. Are these facts? They're facts they, figures, yeah. They're actually You've done the like, research on these, oh, yeah, and I'm not about this guy. Yeah. Right, okay. The world population is rising by about 210 to 220,000 every single day. Like, if you can see a population rising, and then see all the land has been taken out of food production for the like of an earlier here at the minute, these bloody solar panels been put on the best tillage land in the country. Land up in County Mead there, they did five tonne of wheat two years ago. Now we're under solar panels. And then we have a government minister comes out and say, oh, we need more tillage in Ireland to save import. And the same ministers go then and allow solar panels where, where we should be growing corn. But the man that owns them fields, was he talked into putting solar panels on or did he sit Actually, down? He was, the... he was offered big money. He was offered big money. Uh, what he thought was big money. But long term, it won't be big money because for a start, you have to pay the tax out of it. Uh, high rate tax. If you go to transfer the farm to the next generation, it's not counted as farmland anymore, it's counted as industry. So you pay another high tax, there's no tax relief on it. And they, can, they have a 30, 25, 30 year contract, they walk away, they leave you with a field full of solar panels and concrete bases. Your job to get rid of them. Like, who's going to do all that? Short term money. Short term money. But I tell you, there's none of those companies going to make up any farmer long term. Because if they thought it was such a good idea, they would actually buy in the land. But they released it. So it's a scam from day one. But look, at this dad's falling for it. And, but like, there's loads of, loads of bad land in Ireland. Go down to the west of Ireland, go over to the bogs. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of acres of poor land doing nothing. There's hundreds of thousands of acres in Dublin of big, massive roofs on, on factories and, and warehouses. That's the place for solar panels. Don't be taking up farmland if it's producing food at a time of of uh, world food shortages. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, I firmly believe that there is a famine coming. It's not that terrible far away. Um, because... In our generation? In, oh, definitely in our generation. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's no young farmers. The average age of farmer in Ireland is 62. Like, you can't run a business long-term with a 62-year-old, with a 62 average age group. Like, in any business, the average age should be 40. Yeah, people there working from the say they're from the age of 18 to the time of 65. Average is 41 or 2. The average in agriculture is 62. It's retirement age. Mm. You know? I, I've, I've done a survey of this area here of 55 farms and only five have a successor. Whoa. Now that's a massive stat. And that is on the ground that there is oh, 10 farms going around, around about my farm here. And only one of them have a successor. So what's going to happen to them other nine? Well, sure, including my own. Like, I have two daughters. I have no sons. Uh, we're going actually going into ponies here on the farm. So I have, a, I have daughters into, into ponies and equine. So if they want to keep the farm going for that, they can. I've given them the opportunity of doing that. That's all I can do for them. Uh, and if they decide themselves if you're saying they don't want to go that road either, well, then uh, the gate will be closed. Because I can, I'm 54, I'm not going to be slaving around here walking with a walking stick on a Zimmer frame farming in 20 years' time. It <laughs> so. must be very disheartening for yourself and other farmers <coughs> of your age or era knowing that I'm doing this, not for nothing, but I'm, not, I'm doing all this work and there's no guarantee that the next generation is going to take it on. It could be some stranger could come in and develop the site. Or... Yeah. Which I know of, of, uh, of one farmer who uh, has no kids, he's not married. And he was at a family function and he said to his, his nephews that, uh, that uh, he may come down and, and uh, start doing a bit of work on the farm and it'll be yours in a few years' time. And the nephew laughed at him. He says, sell it. He says, I don't want it. Not to do with it. It's not going down there. Yeah. And your man was very upset over it because he thought, like, Jesus, these young guys now will be mad to inherit land and farm. Uh, no, and this is a model farm full of good machinery, best of land, lovely setup, just the, the picture picture farmyard. And no one wants to even walk into it. And like we have a government who don't care. That's, I've said it before, I've said it about the ministers, they just don't care. 
I don't know why they don't care. And a lot of them ministers are from an agricultural background. They, they should know. Oh, look at They should know, but they don't know. I don't know. If something happens to them when they, get up to, when they get elected. Something clicks off in the brain. They do uh, know, but maybe they don't want to admit it because of the, what they might lose. I don't know. I know you were saying what they're going to lose. There's a lot of going to lose in the next election in there because they're just... They haven't, they haven't served the people that, that, who put them there. Um, like, you can't stay voting for people who are... Who are doing you harm? Like think about it. Like if somebody does you a bad turn, are you going to vote for them again? No, no. Now an awful lot of farmers are hoodwinked into Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil, but they want to wake up because look at. I don't know. I could I could go on for an hour about politics on. on we'll uh, save that for the next video. We'll not yeah. we'll not divulge too much into, but we kind of covered everything there. Just wanted to give the the viewers a background as to who you are, what yeah. you do. And in the next video, I think we're going to go a little bit more in depth yeah. into the into the government. You have solutions. You're yeah, not well, sure. Look, we have common sense solutions because I think that's lacking in government. I mean, it is common sense. It's very simple. It's like well, common sense, yeah. But you also have solutions based on facts and research. Oh yeah, you've definitely. Done. Yeah. Oh, there's so, no way of making. There's no. It's, it's 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 very easy to make things an awful lot better. Yeah. You know, stroke of a pen can solve an awful lot of problems. Yeah. But well, we don't have the people who know what stroke to make on, on the pen. That's the problem. You know? Like when you have... I will just, for example, when you have government ministers and now a Taoiseach who never worked a day in the real world, what would they know about work, rural Ireland, employing people, creating jobs, running a business, cutting costs, saving money, being economical? They haven't a clue. They don't know the first thing about it. Like, if you run a silage outfit, and an awful lot of men have run silage outfits and gone broke, but if you run a silage outfit and are still in business today, you've done an awful lot right. Because you've survived recessions, uh, you, you, you survived all the lockdowns, uh, we survived a lot of uh, agriculture going through very bad prices, uh, diesel going through the roof. We have been thrown, everyone thrown at us. And if you're still cutting silage in 2024, You've done an awful lot right in your business to be still here. Because an awful lot of fellas are not still here. Uh, and those who are, are damn good businessmen and run a very good tight ship. Like, there's no waste around here. Uh, there's no, like, I like, you might say, loader's a fancy loader. I can't work without that machine. It's as simple as that. You yeah, know? well, that's, that's, um, well, like, previous... we turn around here, there's a tractor there, little Valma 6.4. It's on its, this year it'll be raking silage. It'll be its 30th year at silage this year on this farm. And two payments left. Oh, payments. <laughs> she hasn't had a payment in 25 years. You know? Yeah. So, like, that's how I can make money out of contracting. By running the kit I run. Like, there's other, there's other lads. I saw a, a contractor who went broke there. But she hit a brand new tractor pulling a rake. That joker pulled the rake. You know? 15 gallons of diesel a day. Take, take over there all day. No monitor. But, like, you have to be shrewd in this game. To survive and as shrewder you're going to have to be because the cost of this machinery has gone through the roof i was talking to a sales rep yesterday and like i've developed a two three four outside there and from the time i bought that one three years ago the new model's gone up 50 grand yeah christopher was saying that in the last video we done that the uh, track that he bought i think it's a two three one if he's to buy it today to be 50 grand more like like 50 grand more i what are we going to have to charge to get that back? And that's just one machine. Mm. You know? Like there's a silage wagon there, jumbo there, that was bought new for 74,000. Uh, the new model this year is 125,000. And that was bought new by me. I bought that machine new. Uh, and the Pottinger rake here, bought new for 18,000 five years ago. The new one's 28,000. Like the jumps, the jumps in the new machinery, and they all brought this thing during the war. All steel's gone, gone through the roof and everything. But sure, it's all come back down. And the gas and the, oil, the, the production costs have come back down. But the machinery hasn't come down. It's still going up. So, like, I can't see... I, I don't know. I and you... When you see a, a new tractor there now, like the 254 out there now, costing a quarter of a million, where are you going to contract with a quarter of a million tractor? I don't know. I just... It terrifies me. Um, like if you go down that road, 
and there are lads going down that road, how much work do you have to do then just to stay afloat? It's questionable there. Is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? It's not sustainable at the current rates of work that we're getting paid. Definitely not sustainable at that. And can the farmer pay more? Like, that's, that is the big question. Can the farmer afford to pay what we're going to need? And it's well, getting, can they? Uh, well, on last year's big price, not really. Uh, they're going to have to get an increase. Everything's going to have to go up. The big problem is food is too cheap. That's the big problem in the world. But I'm only saying this from a consumer's point of view. Food isn't cheap. I have noticed that uh, we are a family of four. When we go and do the shopping, like yeah. even in the last year, we have noticed yeah. 30, 40 quid every, you know, over oh, the space yeah. of a year. Let's go back to stats. 40 years ago, the average family spent 34% of their income on food. Last year, it was down to 9%. You went into, into little there now. Buy a bag of carrots, 49 cent. I used to actually sell turnips in the farm for sale. When I was a young guy, I, I used to sell a lot of turnips. We used to fat a lot of sheep here. And I grew turnips. And 35 years ago, I was getting 25 pence, which is 30 cent for a turnip. And the shop was selling it for 50 pence, or which is 60 cent now. There's turnips today in the shop at 70 cent. So don't tell me food has gone up. Right? Yeah. The luxury foods have gone up. Well, you can now, I know potatoes are going to be here at the minute due to the weather. But if you get a bag of spuds, you get your vegetables, you get a lump of bacon or a lock of minced meat, you put a dinner up there for four or five euros. Yeah, well, true, when you do say it like that. You know. But, but if you go into the shop and you buy all the ready veg, all the ready meals and all that crap. Then convenience food. Well, not even the vegan food, but like. No, convenience. Convenience food, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in and buy the made up pizzas and all that shit. Like, you're wasting money. You know, but like you way, like last summer, a bag of spuds there, neighbor here sells spuds, a bag of spuds, say they're there for a fiver. Like a, a fiver worth of spuds feed a family for the week. Someone was saying that um, the price of spuds have actually gone through the roof. Not gone through the roof, but what you used to pick, get for a tenner now is costing you maybe 12 or 14 euro. What you used to get for a tenner is now costing you 25 euro. Ooh. Yeah, I saw, but put it this way. There's a bag of spuds in the shop for the last 10 years at 5 euro, right? It was 20 kilos, then it was 10 kilos, now then it was five. 5 kilos, and yeah. the layers I've seen is 2.5 kilos for 5 euro. Mm. So that's the way that's gone. But they're just not there. Like for, I heard there, some of the, the big men, spud men up north, Dublin there in Mead, uh, still actually harvest the spuds, and only 30% of the crop is saleable. So straight away, you wonder why spuds are scarce, or 70% dumped. Why are they being dumped? Just they're left in the ground all winter in the wet weather, couldn't get them out. Then they got frost damage and just not saleable, you know. That's another knock-on effect then, they're going to have no seeds for this year's crop. Uh, seed will be scarce, but sure, the biggest problem at the minute is they can't sow them. She can't get last year's out, never mind sow this year's. Last year's acting out, but like, all the early spuds are sowed in March. There's no spuds on the March this year. So your early spuds now for June, July are not going to be there in the shop. Um, I was out in Europe there during the winter, and same thing, Germany the same, Holland, Belgium, England, all the same. So, so it's not just Ireland that's facing this crisis, no. it's... No, it's European, right? but you look, at, that's why the tractor protests were on in Europe all winter. Like, the European farmers had enough of the bullshit. Um, there wasn't an awful lot of protests done in Ireland, there should have been an awful lot more. Why uh, was there no protest done in Ireland? Why was there no? Because an awful lot of the Irish farmers are just too lazy and too snug, and maybe still have maybe too much money in their pocket. But hey, give them another year when they get a little bit hungrier, it'll be easier to get them to protest then. And everyone's waiting for everyone else to do it. Like we blocked Dublin before, I blocked the M50, except for Christopher Duffy, we blocked Dublin a few times, and we made a stand, and we got great support. But like, more men need to do it. Like I heard there lately, somebody from the Fianna, Fa Fianna Gael party says, can't understand why the, why the farmers haven't blocked Dublin this year. And I know like, it's very hard to get time and there's no help on the farms and that's some of the problem but like there should have been a bigger effort made there six weeks ago to block down Dublin for a day or two and put the government under real pressure and uh, they were put under no pressure um, and like I, as I said the government must think farmers are all happy <laughs> you know farmers still are broke I should have governed that I should have if they were broke to be up here giving out yeah you know? yeah so I don't know anyway, I think we're going to cut a short of that and we might do a part two and maybe a part three. Yeah, yeah. We cut it short anyway. James, thanks for having us down. And it's not a bother. You're more than welcome. Look forward to chatting to you again on different issues. Yeah, sound. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers.